In 2016, professional makeup artist and entrepreneur Amy Connolly established Sculpted by Amy Cosmetics. Through innovation and effective use of digital and social media channels, Sculpted by Amy has successfully disrupted the traditional business model established by major global cosmetics brands. At the 2021 EY Entrepreneur of the Year Awards, Amy Connolly won the top prize in the emerging category. My first introduction to the makeup world from an artistry perspective was when I started my part-time job in fourth year, transition year in school. So I was one of those students who was not organized whatsoever for work experience and my mom was about to kill me. So I went into House of Frasier, which was there at the time, and did my two weeks with Benefit Cosmetics. So I think I probably just sold a load of product to people. You know, I, I certainly wasn't uh, able to do makeup at the time. I was your classic girly girl teenager who liked, you know, lashings of black eyeliner and blue glitter and, and everything really that, that general teenagers do, but you definitely should not put on a client. And then they kindly offered me a job in Urban Decay Cosmetics. So I worked on their counter every Saturday and Sunday for three years. So naturally, you know, I had the coolest part-time job ever because I was like full-time school student and then part-time makeup artist on the weekends. And that was brilliant, um, both from obviously delving into the makeup world, but also from a confidence perspective because, you know, you're dealing with all walks of life in terms of customers that come through the door. And I wouldn't have said I was overly confident before then, but I definitely, and my mom would agree, saw a big change over those kind of three years. So I finished three years there, obviously finished my leaving cert, went on to MAC Cosmetics, which were just pure icons of the time. Um, I was so excited to work there, but again, it was still part-time because I had begun my studies in commerce and French in UCD. So again, I was full-time student and part-time artist on the Mac counter, but I actually only stayed in Mac for the year because I then kind of backed myself and said, I'm going to work for myself and do freelance. So I was really, really lucky that I was exposed to kind of every pocket within the makeup industry, which was amazing for me and obviously doing teaching as well. So I finished my four year degree. And when I graduated at this stage, I'd been working in the makeup industry for six years. So I absolutely knew I was not going to go into another corporation or do a graduate program. So for me, the, the natural progression was to mix my love of makeup with my business degree. And that's what ultimately led me to the brand Sculpted. One of my first lessons, I suppose, in starting the brand or starting the world of business was in my first six months. And I think it kind of came down to a mixture of me being taken advantage of by a company that probably felt, you know, this young girl probably doesn't know a lot about it and probably part naivety on my side that not everyone has your best interest at heart like I would have assumed at the time. So I had partnered with a supplier who ultimately I felt weren't giving me the same value or respect of product versus longer clients that they would have had part down to maybe my age or maybe my lack of experience or potentially lack of respect and um, or so I felt. So in the end, after six months, I actually confronted them about it. You know, 23, big and ballsy, like I'm going to go direct to factory and I'm going to do it on my own. And that's exactly what I did. So I left their office that day, went straight to factory and now since have developed, you know, 12 factories around the world that we have relationships with. When you go direct to your factory, you've got full control of the product. You're creating something quite unique and bespoke for the brand. But essentially, you're also backing yourself to say you can do this. So I didn't actually need them. I mean, it was amazing to get me started from all the new areas like regulations and stuff. But actually, what happened and what soon became a massive learning is you can do this on your own and you don't need these people to help. And four years on, you know, I would deal directly with, with 12 global factories around the world. Digital First was always going to be the way for me and Sculpted as a brand. You know, even prior to, to launching the brand, for me, social media was huge, both as a marketing tool, but also as a way for me to showcase my work to deal with customers. So prior to Sculpted and just being a freelance makeup artist, I had started a Facebook page before it was like the in thing. And there was huge growth on that. Like you'd run a competition, you'd get like 3000 followers overnight, which just doesn't really happen anymore. So for me, I always, probably marketed myself online. It's just that now it's become a much stronger tool for marketing alone for the business, one that we absolutely could not avoid. 
So for example, when, when COVID arrived and everything kind of stopped in terms of face to face, you know, we really had to look at ourselves and say, okay, what are we going to do here? Because we were doing so many face to face events. We were doing our academy courses. We obviously had our shop, which was a service destination for, for clients. And we really had to dig deep. And it was amazing because we actually not only pivoted what we were already doing, we created this whole new area of opportunity, which will never not be a part of the brand now. So we moved everything virtual from doing lessons to classes, to tutorials, to lives, to in conversation events. And it was amazing. We had such a brilliant engagement online. We made ourselves really available for customers online as well. And we ended up having like over 4,000 people join whatever we were doing virtually, which was just brilliant. And even when I think about new markets now, my whole approach has changed. So if you'd asked me two years ago, I would have said, oh, I'm definitely basing it on this retailer. I need to be in this store. Whereas now we're like, okay, let's start digital. Let's go through online and then let's see about the omni-channel approach. So it's kind of opened up this whole new area for us that I don't think we would have considered with such strong conviction had we not been forced to over the last two years. I absolutely love being distributed in stores. I think that's never going to go. You know, we're in boots, we're in pharmacies, and those destinations are really helpful for customers who like to get a, their hands on products and get a feel for them, provided testers are there. But digital and being online is definitely where the easiest growth is. So when we're looking at new markets, you know, for me, I'm starting with digital because you've way less investment involved. Yes, you need to get your logistics sorted, but ultimately it's an easier battle to try and break into a new market slowly and then look at maybe your distribution channel beyond that. When you start through online, obviously you need to have your logistics in place, but ultimately it is a far less investment that you need to make as a brand, which is obviously less risk as well. So that's going to definitely change our tune in terms of our international approach, but also in terms of how we communicate with customers. You know, online is an invaluable tool, particularly Instagram. It's definitely where we see ourselves the most. And it comes back to our three pillars of the business. So we would like to claim that we're definitely girly. So not only are we very proud to be lots of pink, we also see it in a way that we empower our customers. So education for us is key. And we do that through sharing constant tutorials. It could be step by step. It could be doing virtual events. But it's really, really important for us that customers know that they're getting the full value on how to use the products. And essentially online is, is the best way for us to do that. Another two key pillars that we have are authentic and good for you. So authentic very much sits with our digital first approach as well in the sense that we like to consider ourselves very honest, very transparent, and um, both in terms of like maybe what's in the products, where they're made, what they do, how they look in the skin. But also we would have a very strong approach on our hashtag filter free faces. So we absolutely endeavor to never filter, Photoshop, not only because it doesn't make sense because you can't see the true benefit or effect of the product, but also because filtering someone's skin to unrealistic levels just is not good for anyone's self-confidence. So that's something that we're very, very strong and keen on online and something that I think a lot of customers really appreciate. And then coming back to good for you. So this very much attains itself to the benefits we feel our products have. So from an actual ingredient level in terms of what's inside the formulas and what makes them different. We'd very much pride ourselves on having that kind of makeup skincare hybrid approach, but also in terms of how they make you feel. So we would have joked over the last two years that we completely, hands up, we know makeup is the fluffy stuff. It is not gonna solve the world's problems, but it absolutely makes you feel 10%, 100% better depending on what you're using. And if it makes you feel good, then we're all about it. So we like to think both with our education in terms of how to use them, our multi-purpose kind of simplifying routine products and the good for you benefits inside that they're essentially helping you create the sculpted feel good look. So yes, my name sits below the brand title on the tube, above the door, whatever way you want to call it. So sculpted by Amy and I am <laughs> the Amy. Um, it's something that's actually come up in conversation a lot lately um, in terms of, I suppose, the brand's growth and then people often question you on the succession of you when you're entering new markets, how does Amy fit into it? And it's really ironic to say, but I had never really considered the whole theme of my name being attached to the product. Like for me, at the beginning, it was just unequivocal. Like I am so proud of what I'm going to create and, and this is my project and I'm so heavily involved in every area. So yeah, it's sculpted by Amy, you know, I'm doing it. Um, and it's funny, now it's come to light with all these questions around, is it a positive, is it a negative? 
And I think ultimately for us, it's it's definitely a positive. You know, I, like I said, I'm so proud to have my name there. And, you know, you obviously have a few risks involved and people often say when your name is on it and then you're living on social, it's kind of 24 seven and it's relentless and there's no stop, which it is. But I think it's also your responsibility to maybe if you feel like you're getting a bit of burnout or you need to take a bit of downtime to switch off the phone for a few days if you find social is just so consistent and relentless. And I think that people are totally okay with that nowadays. You know, that whole theme of self-care is very much a widespread notion. So I think if you need to, it's your own responsibility to, to take stock. Although I live online, I very much showcase work. I showcase kind of the graph that goes into it. So we would generally avoid any kind of negativity or trolling, as people would say, but I know it does exist. But for me, I'd never look at having my name on the product as a negative or a risk or something that I regret. I think ultimately it's been amazing for us because I also think people like people. They like the personality. They like seeing that this is actually a vehicle that's run by the manpower of the amazing team behind me and also myself being so heavily involved in every area. And I think that kind of shows people that, you know, this isn't just something that you click your fingers and all the products arrive. It's like it's there's a lot of layers to it. And I've definitely found that people really, I suppose, admire and appreciate the fact that we show that behind the scenes and the fact that we are very much advocates of showing the people in the brand as well. And I think people really like that. And, and we're absolutely on board with showing that side as well. In business, there are so many highs and lows and, you know, the highs definitely make up for the lows, but you do have a lot of down days. And a lot of people will relate to this when I say that actually running a business on your own can be very lonely. Um, and even prior to starting the brand, I would have put a lot of work into to running my part time business, essentially full time while I was still a student. So there's a lot of sacrifices that had to be made along the way and still are. I think it's really, really important to have strong people around you. So I was very fortunate that you know, my mom, who is the strongest single mom I've ever met, and obviously I'm completely biased, was an amazing um, hero figure in the sense that she really taught me about hard work. And it's funny, I think it's only when I'm in my 20s now that I realize all oh, that she probably passed off to me, but I was kind of oblivious at the time. So she's a real grafter, doesn't take no for an answer and just goes for it. I think she definitely passed that on to me, which is great. And she listens to all the situations that might arise. Similarly, I'd have my partner, John, he also runs his own business, so he very much gets the struggles that would be involved. You know, my friends were very supportive along the way because there was a lot of, you know, social gatherings I would have had to miss out on when I was growing up because work would have taken priority at the time. Now, don't get me wrong, I still still made up a lot of them, but, you know, that, that can be tough as well in a group of friends. And I think it's really, really important when you're starting out that firstly, you have those strong people around you, be it family, friends or a mentor but you have someone that you can sound these ideas to because I think when you have your own business and when you're working for yourself, you know that standard cliche of like, oh, you're never off, even though people think you just decide what days you want to work and what days you don't want to work, which is absolutely not true. And I'm never off, but I love it because I'm so driven by it and I love the goals and I love the ambition, I love the ideas, but you do reach a bit of a crashing point or you do need to sound off your ideas in your head going, am I mad thinking this? What do you think about this? What do you think about that? And sometimes, you know, although your team might be great, you just need someone completely neutral. So I've definitely had um, amazing experiences along the way that I don't think I would have been able to do it completely on my own had I not. So I definitely consider myself very lucky in that regard. For me, Clicks and Mortar has always been a part of the brand strategy. You know, we started in that omni-channel approach of having distribution and online, and it's always something that we'll keep within the brand. A lot of brands I know are pivoting now since the last kind of year and a half has taken such a toll on stores and they're saying, right, I'm going to stick to digital. Whereas for me, I definitely think that customers still really crave that tactile experience of being in store, getting to feel the product, or maybe getting personal assistance from a brand ambassador who's directly there just to help them or maybe try on the product for them. And I just think that's never going to go away. Like we can even see it since stores have reopened. They're all trading up versus what they were the year prior and the year prior to that. So there is an uplift there in stores. It's definitely not a dead area and it definitely won't be for us. I also opened our own flagship store and that very much played homage to my starting as a makeup artist and wanting that experience for customers. So this is our own personal store. You can come and have a makeover or a makeup lesson or just get 
very specific sculpted advice where they might shade match you, etc. And that for me was such a passion project because that's kind of paying homage to how I started. So I would have started on counter with, you know, you come in, you're getting direct advice of that brand and I'm there to help you. And I really wanted that 360 for us as a brand because yes, we are all about making it easier for the general consumer, having multi-purpose product and just simplifying your routine. But at the same time, I started as a makeup artist and I want to have those trusty, reliable makeup artists assisting customers within my brand to give them the same experience that I think is so important. This year, I am a finalist in the EY Entrepreneur of the Year Awards. And when I got that first email, it was a little bit surreal, but obviously amazing. And I think sometimes when you work for yourself and you have your own business, you know, you have those kind of down days where you think, what am I doing? I haven't done this yet. And I would definitely be someone who puts a lot of internal pressure on myself. And I've always been like that, even through like school grades or college grades. It's just this level of expectation that I put on myself, which drives me but isn't always a positive thing because I think I don't really maybe celebrate the wins enough but when I got that email you know you have this moment of like oh I'm a finalist maybe maybe I am doing something all right or maybe something is going well because sometimes you've got your blinkers on and you're just so focused on what you don't have yet that you're not appreciating what you have built to date so it was amazing on lots of levels like that and obviously you're introduced this massive community of you know, these huge entrepreneurs that you would always have looked up to and considered inspirations and still do. And all of a sudden you're sitting in the same room as them. So for me, I'm like a sucker. I love talking about business. I just feel such a thrive when I hear other people share their stories. And, you know, I'm like, yeah, I have that issue too, or that worked for me, or that high was amazing or whatever it is. So it's been, it's been really, really good to date. And everyone is so inviting and so approachable for something that could be deemed so scary. So I'm really looking forward to how the next few weeks pan out. But so far, it's, it's been great to be connected with such a broad spectrum of business people. One of the biggest questions I always get asked is, how did you have the confidence to go for it? Or how did you know everything to start a brand? And the absolute honest answer, which sounds like a cop out, is I didn't know everything, but I didn't overthink it. So I knew exactly the product I wanted, the consistency of it, how it was going to look, everything beyond that. And I don't say that lightly. I literally learned on the go uh, and I've got zero regrets. It was that pure, call it naivety, oblivion or fearlessness that actually propelled me because I didn't give myself a chance to overthink it or to psych myself out of it. I just was like, yeah, I'm going to go for it and it's going to be fine. It's not always mine. You know, there's going to be a lot of issues along the way, a lot of mistakes that you learn from. But it's amazing because when you make it once, you'll never make it again. And you probably learn a lot of other things that came from it versus just the first issue that happened. So I think really having that, it doesn't have to be fearlessness, but that confidence in yourself that you're going to do it. And if you don't have the answers, you'll find the answers. I think that kind of comes with being an entrepreneur, or being a leader is that openness to picking up the phone and asking someone a question or being honest over email to say, you know, this is not my area. Can you help me? And people are so forthcoming with help. They really want people to succeed. I've had nothing but positive experiences of people lending a hand as well. I think when you have your own idea, be it a product or a service or whatever it is you're going to start, you have this notion that everyone thinks that you have to have all the answers when you're doing it because it's it's your idea, it's your business, it's your, it's your goal, when essentially no one has all the answers. And I think one of the biggest benefits and one of the biggest strong leadership goals and aspects is actually having the confidence to ask someone for help. So whether you're asking a complete stranger in an area that you don't know, or whether you're entering a networking situation and you're being very open and honest, I think people really appreciate that because often if you turn around and say, God, I haven't a clue, someone else is probably likely thinking the same thing and maybe you can offer advice in an area that you can't and then it works both ways and it creates good karma. So I think really backing yourself and knowing that you're so passionate about this and that passion is not going to falter. So whatever you don't know, you'll figure out as you go. And ultimately it's, it's propelled the brand hugely for me. Like in the first year and a half, I didn't hire. I was kind of a control freak. I wanted to know every area. But for me, it suited me brilliantly because I felt like I needed to know it before I hired and passed it off to someone else in the team. And that's exactly what I did. And everyone is different, but you can obviously hire quicker and get resources in. But for me, that learning on the go was one of the most invaluable things I ever did because I really got to know the full 360 of my business. Now, there's still lots of times where, where I don't have all the answers, you know, even when I'm hiring for roles. 
I've obviously never worked in a corporation and sometimes I think was that a negative that I I haven't been exposed to a culture or to a way of working or different job titles but then I kind of think it was probably an advantage because I only know my way so my values and the way I want my culture to be is automatically passed on and thankfully it's worked out so I was nearly like a neutral canvas I wasn't you know affected by any other areas that I'd worked in so I think it has been a positive but you know I, I really didn't know a lot doing that you just kind of have to learn as you go and you just have to back yourself. If you're passionate about what you're going to do, everything else will fall into place. Even if you have some really crap days, which is always going to happen, you'll have some really amazing high days that will always make up for it. And ultimately, the journey is the best part.